we encountered a new problem with charging at home. I guess we got too many electric cars. <laughs> we got our chargers right here. And now that we have a truck that can tow my trailer, quite frequently the trailer is hooked to the truck and when I pull in, that's how it looks like. Then my wife pulls in later with the Rivian and she's back there. And now the problem is all our charging equipment is here. Even though we have 24 foot cords on these chargers, it's not gonna reach back there. <laughs> so that was a new problem. And I found a really cool solution for it. So we got our two Tesla chargers right here. There's one on each side. This is a second generation over here. We have the third generation and that one even is the universal. So it has a J1772 adapter right there built in and we can just grab it and plug the Rivian in. Well, or not, because now it's too far away. The trailer is too long. So now we cannot reach the Rivian back there with this charger anymore. So, and anyway, if we have two of them sitting here, one car on each side, plus a third one, well, two chargers are not gonna do the trick. So we needed a third charger, obviously, but we do have the NEMA 1450 plug down here, and these are all on separate circuits, so they can run all full blast. This can do 80 amp charging, the one over here can do 48 amp charging, and this one can do 40 amps charging. So they can run all full blast at the same time. That is not the problem at all. So, but we used um, the Rivian charger now and plugged it in here into the NEMA 1450. But now, well, this cord's too short as well. It doesn't reach back there. I just uh, can't get far enough. Whoa! Uh, uh. Halfway on the trailer. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's not doing the trick. Can't get there. I'm just about, I'm a little more than halfway, but I'm not there. And uh, so I needed a solution. And first I was thinking I'm gonna use my 50 amp extension cord. I do have a extension cord that has NEMA 1450s on it and it's rated at 50 amps. And I could just plug that into the NEMA 1450 here and then use the Rivian charger out there, plug it into the extension cord. But then obviously this one would sit outside and who knows, it's laying out there if somebody runs over the charger or steps on it, kicks it or whatever, you never know what happens, right? So maybe not a good idea to have this charger laying out there on the ground. So, ah, and on top of that, I use that extension cord for work and that means I gotta drag it in and out of my trailer here all the time. That kind of sucks too, because it's a heavy cord and especially when it's cold or colder, like it is frequently here in Montana, that cord is relatively stiff and then it's hard to uncoil and recoil. So I had to find a better solution for that. And I found something really cool and it doesn't just work here. That's the even better thing. It is actually a solution that works when we're out and about. Have you ever been iced? Well, maybe not you, but the charger you wanted to use. No, not iced this way. No, no, that way. Yes, it happens. You come to a public charger and what's there? Some gas or diesel vehicle is parked right in front of it. The cord's too short to even reach over one spot in most cases. Some reach over one spot, but there are more ice cars there. So no way for you to charge, right? But with what I got now, we can use it and we can go quite a ways. We can go two, three, four spots away and still charge. The Rivian has a plenty big frunk to carry along this item. And it comes nicely in a carrier bag. Super cool. It is from EV Dance. This back is nicely padded too. So it's not necessarily that something is gonna damage what's in here, but if this is laying on top of something else, maybe it will damage something else, who knows, or the other way around, but nicely padded back. And here is the magic. It is an extension cord for a J1772. Rather than having an extension cord 
a regular extension cord or a 50 amp extension cord that you can only use on the outlet side, we have an extension cord with a J1772 with the appropriate plugs. So you can plug the charger in here and plug this into your car. And these come in a variety of length and a variety of amperage ratings. So you can find the one that uh, fits your budget and fits your needs. And that's kind of important. We don't all need a high amperage, super long cord. Some of us are happy with a shorter cord around 21 feet. And some of us rather have 40 feet, right? Some of us are happy with 32 amps and others we want to be 48 amps. So it depends on your needs. EV Dance has them all. They have a huge variety. They even have them for the NACS, for the NAX plug, for the Tesla plug. So then you have the appropriate Tesla ends on this cord. And the advantage of this is you can take it with you. And if the charger is iced out in the public, out in the wild, when you get there, but you have a spot within the reach of your cord, then you just take that spot and you run the cord over and you can charge your car. And that can be sometimes really, really important Especially for us here in Montana, we have few DC fast chargers and most DC fast chargers are only along like I-90, the, the most important routes, right? Um, I-15. But then if we go off the beaten path, it's a lot tougher for us. But there are level two chargers out there. But it's not uncommon that they're iced. There's an internal combustion engine vehicle sitting there and now with this, we can still charge. We can reach one spot, two spots, three spots over, depending on the length of the cord. So our cord's plenty long here, so <laughs> we can reach at least three spots over, no big deal. Um, and uh, this one is rated at 40 amps that we have here. So we can use it with uh, the mobile connector from the Rivian too, and just uh, run this right here, have the Rivian parked here, run this out, and that works great. So, well, let's plug it in and see. It has two Velcro straps here. So you can actually coil that cord up neatly tight so it fits back in the back. I mean, heck, if you don't want to put it back in the back, you can just throw it in the front. The Rivian has a plenty big front anyway. So here, that works great. Depends a little bit on your car. If you throw it in the trunk or whatever we do, uh, we got plenty of space right here. So, and so now we got this end, whoop, we got this end right here. And this is this weird looking end. And let me come in a little closer. But you can identify that this is a J1772 end. That is where we plug, well, not this particular one, but that one on the ground there, we plug into here. And then this one here, we plug into the car. So let's uncoil this. And by the way, whenever you use extension cords, it doesn't matter if it's an extension cord like this or any extension cord always uncoil the entire thing. Never leave it coiled up, okay? Um, coiled up extension cords generate a magnetic field, generate heat, and uh, a heated up extension cord can become a huge problem. It can heat itself more and more and more and eventually get too hot, even though it's within the rating. So always uncoil them and especially here, we're talking uh, with the mobile connector from Rivian. We're talking 32 amps charging. So we want to make sure that this is all the way uncoiled. Then preferably right now it's laying on the ground there. Um, our J1772 connection. Preferably bring it off the ground. It's not really an issue. We had it out in the weather. That works too. Um, it's just like you're plugged in here. It's out in the weather. It does work. But if you can, um, maybe bring it off the ground. So we got enough cord here, so we can hang that up there. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> it doesn't take much time. And now we're all this distance from there all the way to here. And now we can charge full blast here with the Rivian portable charger. We can do the 32 amps that the car can take with this extension cord. And there's no time limit to it. You can go from empty to full, no problem. You can go two hours, five hours, 10 hours, whatever it takes. The court uh, is rated high enough for us here anyway. For you, when you go onto the EV Dance website, look at 
all the different cords. They have a whole bunch of them. Like I said, they have different lengths and different amperage ratings and the different plugs. So you can get either a J1772 or an NACS, the Tesla plug, right? If you want to. Now, by the way, if you think you can get a J1772 and use two adapters to charge a Tesla, if you have a Tesla EVSE like we do, you use an adapter, right? From that to the J1772 cord, and then you use your Tesla adapter that came with the Tesla to go back to your Tesla. That doesn't work. <laughs> I tried it, okay? Um, I thought I'm gonna be super smart and I just used two adapters and because I got them both, right? I can plug in the other adapter. I mean, we even have the, the uh, Gen 3 Tesla wall connector that has the J1772 adapter on it, right? So we can plug our extension cord right into this and then just use the J1772 to Tesla adapter and plug it into the Tesla and bang, that works. Well, it don't, I'm sorry, but the Tesla is not charging. <laughs> we tried it with our Model 3 and it just, it turns red, it won't charge. Uh, it just doesn't work, too many adapters. So you need to make, uh, you need to pick your cord, either a Tesla, a NAX or a J1772. So now I would assume if you get a NAX cord, um, but you have a J1772 charger, then you probably could use the adapter from the charger to the cord and then plug the cord in your Tesla. And that probably works, I would assume, because then we only have one adapter. But here, in this case, well, in this case, we don't need an adapter at all because we have a J1772 charger to the J1772 plug here. But just as we tried with our Model 3, with using an adapter on that end and on this end, it does not work. So you gotta choose what you need or what you want. You gotta choose the amperage. And with the amperage, well, the, the higher the amperage and the longer the cord, obviously, the more money you will have to spend. Um, make sure that your cord is uh, rated higher than the car or the EVSC that you're using. So one of the two. So like in this case, the Rivian can charge at 48 amps. Our cord's only rated at 40. So that could be a problem if the EVSC can provide more than 40 amps, right? If the EVSC provides 40 amps, we're still good because we're at the rating, that is fine. But if that EVSC can provide 48 amps, your car takes 48 amps and the cord's rated at 40, that's not good. Then you have a problem, okay? So now with the Rivian, we can't adjust the amperage in the car. On the other hand, with the Teslas, we can. We can actually lower the charge amperage inside the car so we could accommodate for one of those cords. So if you get an axe cord for a Tesla, then you could go with a lower amperage cord as long as you set your charge rate down inside the car. So that's one option. Another option is that you have a portable EVSC or a hardwired EVSC where you can adjust the amperage on that end. That's another option. So if you have an EVSC that could go up to 48 amps and your cord only goes to 40, but your EVSC is adjustable, you can use a 40 amp cord as long as you set the rating down on your EVSC to 40, then you're fine again. So there, there's a whole variety of options. Um, many of the public J1772 chargers out there, those uh, public EVSEs, there's 32 amps. I found a ton of them at 32 amps. And so with the Arabian portable charger also being 32 amps, I opted for the 40 amp cord in this case. Um, that seems to cover most of the scenarios, I guess. And maybe eventually Rivian will actually update the software and give us an adjustable uh, charge rate. Who knows? So it depends a little bit on your vehicle and what your vehicle can do. It depends on your EVSC, what your EVSC can do. It depends on your needs and how much cord you actually will need. What do you think? How far away from a charger you will have to park or not? Um, frequently it's, you know, one or two, maybe three spots over, you, you know, that works. Uh, obviously you can get, I believe you can get a 50 foot cord or something, <laughs> which is long. I mean, you can be ways down there, right? So th the options are there. Go check them out on the EV Dance website. There's a link down below in the description. 
that takes you to their website um, and you can check out all those courts. Uh, I also did a review of the EV Dance uh, CCS adapter for Tesla here a while back. There's a link gonna be down below too. This is a great adapter too. You can also find that on their website. And usually on their website, they offer some discounts right off the bat. So you don't need a discount code from my end here. And for the US, they uh, provide free shipping even. So, well, go check them out. Um, like I said, this comes in handy, not just at home. Maybe you have a friend coming over that is visiting you and you have whatever arrangement. Maybe you have a party, right? And all these gas cars are there. Your friend comes over with the electric car, would like to plug in. Now you would have to shuffle five cars to get them charging, or you just bring the extension cord out and plug in. Out in public, well, at the hotel, you get there at night, midnight, nobody's around, everybody's sleeping. Well, guess what? There's an ice car parked at the charger. You have an extension cord, you just park one or two spots over, use it right there, really great. So go check out EV Dance, the website, and look at all these opportunities you have to make your life so much easier with these extension cords. In any event, thank you for watching, goodbye.